This paper, Fiscal Multipliers in the COVID-19 Recession, is joint work with my colleague Yuri Gorodnichenko at Berkeley, Peter McCrory of J.P. Morgan Chase, and Dan Murphy of the University of Virginia. In the paper we ask, uh, the key question we ask is how fiscal multipliers are affected by a COVID type shock. Now we start from our knowledge of what happens in recessions and work that in particular Yuri and I have done in the past suggests that when you have a recession, particularly a deep one, uh, and there's a lot of slack, labor market slack in the economy, uh, multipliers, fiscal multipliers might be very large um, because it's possible for demand to have a big impact on the labor market before hitting constraints. But the recession at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, though very, very significant in terms of GDP loss and increase in unemployment, was a very special one. Uh, because in addition to the uh, decline in economic activity, several other things happened at the same time. There were supply shocks, Effectively, some sectors uh, became, it became much more difficult to produce, more costly. For example, food processing, meat packing, uh, they had to take extra precautions. There were demand shocks as consumers shifted their demand from what one might call dangerous goods, uh, like ocean cruises, uh, to safe ones like video streaming. And finally, there were government policies layered on top of changes in individual behavior. Uh, the, uh, such as quarantines, uh, uh, which uh, had potential influence as well. So our strategy in this paper is to uh, use measure of, of, a measure of fiscal policy, which we argue is largely exogenous to uh, short-run economic conditions, which is federal government uh, defense spending uh, payments to contractors, to estimate the effects on employment and consumption uh, of fiscal changes, fiscal shocks, early in the pandemic, uh, either April 2020 or April through June 2020. And what we assess is the impact of government spending on economic activity and how this impact was affected by the adoption of strong stay-at-home orders, that is, uh, orders put in place by uh, local or state governments uh, to limit the extent to which individuals uh, could leave their house for work or for uh, uh, purchases. Uh, just to uh, uh, remind uh, you the, uh, the economic and social environment early in the COVID crisis, there was a very, very sharp drop starting in mid-March in the levels of economic activity and mobility. And in this uh, graph, you see uh, measures of retail mobility with the black line, work mobility with the red dashed line, which tracks uh, retail mobility pretty well. This is people moving to uh, make purchases or to, to go to work. And then a decline in consumer spending, which while moving at the same uh, time, uh, didn't decline as much in part because people were able to do some consumption uh, remotely, that is without actually going out. On the other hand, there was really no uh, observable change in the pattern of defense spending payments. Uh, the variable that we're using uh, to, uh, uh, to measure fiscal changes uh, across locations. And uh, this was very uh, uh, intentional on the part of the federal government. In fact, the federal government took various actions during this period to make sure that defense uh, contracting activity could, uh, could uh, continue, such as by making uh, uh, workers at defense contractors essential workers, and by facilitating uh, payments uh, during this period. So it was very much the government's intention uh, to, keep, uh, to keep this activity going even as other activity fell. Now the stay at home orders that we look at as a measure of uh, government policy in addition to fiscal policy uh, uh, are drawn from a paper, uh, another recent paper, uh, Beck et al, and one of the co-authors of this paper, Peter McCrory, is a co-author on our paper as well, uh, which measured stay-at-home orders across core-based statistical areas, CBSAs, met metropolitan areas, uh, of different sizes, uh, uh, as of the week of April 11th. Uh, and so really the most uh, that could have applied uh, as of that time uh, would have been about four weeks. Uh, where I live, for example, and in the Bay Area, uh, that's where we were. We, we were very early adopters of stay-at-home orders. 
Um, as you can see from, uh, from this graph, uh, it varied by size of city. Uh, smaller areas, uh, less heavily populated areas, uh, the, the green, uh, the, sorry, the red line, uh, tended to be less uh, uh, aggressive in adopting stay-at-home orders. Uh, the uh, green line, uh, the biggest cities, are the most aggressive. Uh, and we uh, define a, a binary variable, either uh, strong stay-at-home orders or not, uh, uh, at three quarters of a week. That is areas, uh, because there was really very little right there, areas to the right uh, we treat as having stay-at-home, strong stay-at-home orders, areas to the left we treat as not having strong stay-at-home orders. And we put in controls for city size and so forth to make sure that that's not uh, con confounding our results. And I should say that when we're measuring the effects of stay-at-home orders, we're measuring the effects of stay-at-home orders as well as the conditions that might have led to stay-at-home orders. That is, to the extent that an area might have had a high incidence of disease and uh, 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 those in charge of the uh, city decided it was appropriate to have a strong stay-at-home order, um, one would expect that the stay-at-home order would have an additional impact, but there also would be an impact of the conditions themselves that led to it. We're not really distinguishing between the effects of the stay-at-home orders and the underlying condition. Uh, we're really just talking about uh, factors, including government policy, that would have led to declines in uh, economic mobility and activity. As you can see, uh, areas with stronger stay-at-home orders were characterized by bigger drops in consumption in the left panel and employment on the right panel uh, relative to the period just before COVID-19. So perhaps not surprisingly, areas that had stronger stay-at-home orders did have bigger drops in economic activity. On the other hand, uh, once controlling for, for obvious uh, other variables that might uh, be associated with Department of Defense spending, there were no changes uh, in the, the changes in Department of Defense spending uh, from the previous year uh, across uh, cities is uncorrelated with, uh, with uh, stay-at-home orders. So as I suggested earlier, the defense spending pattern across the US and the changes in this pattern uh, from one year to another really are not related to uh, sort of high frequency current uh, factors, economic and social factors in a particular area. And that makes it a good uh, measure of uh, uh, exogenous fiscal policy changes. So our basic empirical specification uh, is to relate changes in employment uh, from the previous year, delta Y, I, and I in a particular area I, to uh, changes in government spending, year on year changes in government spending for the year ending in April uh, 2020, uh, delta G, and then the state of uh, lockdown or, or stay at home orders either having a strong stay at home orders or, or not, or high or low. And then the interaction uh, variable, which is uh, highlighted here, is the one that we're interested in. That is, how much is the impact of uh, government spending affected by uh, which state you're in, whether you have a high or low lockdown? And we scale all these things by this, the local payroll size in the previous year, just to make sure that we're uh, doing things on a relative basis. And here are our key results. But the main results we find for employment are that for areas with low stay-at-home orders, there were significant uh, effects on employment. Whether one looks in April or April, and Ju April through June, the effects are a little bit smaller. And April through June, in part because the economy had already recovered, there wasn't as much slack in the economy by the end of the second quarter of 2020. Uh, we also see that there really isn't much difference uh, when one looks at different city sizes. So this wasn't uh, just for large cities or just for small cities. It, and it, if one scales this and sort of says, well, what was the uh, fiscal cost of, of creating a new job for a year, uh, scaled by the, the just looking at a month or three months, we find that for the results through uh, for April, it amounts to about $50,000 per job year. Uh, and that is uh, a pretty pretty inexpensive relative to the literature, suggesting that the fiscal impact was, was actually pretty big in areas with uh, low stay-at-home orders. On the other hand, for areas with high stay-at-home orders, there is basically no impact on employment, um, which suggests that these areas, either because of the stay-at-home orders themselves or because of the conditions that 
contributed to them the, that that made people unwilling or or, or not able to go out um, uh, really mitigated the uh, uh, potentially large effects uh, of fiscal uh, uh, shocks. On the other hand, when we're looking at the effects on retail spending, there is uh, essentially no no impact. Uh, these are you know largely insignificant results in some cases having the wrong sign, um, suggesting that consumer spending really didn't uh, didn't react. Uh, and this is consistent with other evidence we have from that period that it was later in the period when uh, individual when households began to get checks from the federal government, um, a lot a very large share of that was was saved rather than spent. Uh, because in, it, households really were not in a position to spend money in the way that they normally would in a recession when, uh, when getting money from the government. Um, what this suggests is that the employment effects that we found in the earlier uh, table were really coming directly through the uh, fiscal spending that the uh, government was doing through Department of Defense contracting, and not uh, also through indirect effects, that is, uh, consum uh, consumer spending induced by this these initial increases in income, which then might have fed back into higher employment. And other results that we uh, show in the paper uh, confirm that this really is a story about uh, slack in the labor market and not somehow very large consumer responses uh, associated in, in some other cases with recessions. So to summarize, what are our key findings? Our, our key findings are that cities with stay-at-home orders uh, had weakened effects of fiscal policy on employment, actually sharply weaker. The fiscal uh, impact uh, appears to relate to labor market slack. That is, there doesn't uh, seem to be any additional contribution coming from high consumption responses, at least in this case. And again, it's important to stress that this is for a very unusual period. One hopes uh, that uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, led to not just a, a deep recession. Um, and we also suggest in the paper that this leads us to the conclusion that economic recovery requires strong public health responses to remove impediments. That is, again, to stress, the stay-at-home orders aren't necessarily randomly assigned, uh, you know, simply for the purpose of seeing what effect they have. In many cases, they were viewed as necessary for public health. And without uh, measures to uh, ensure public safety, uh, there may not be any alternative to stay-at-home measures. Um, and, and this means that there may not be much of an impact of fiscal policy. We also argue in the paper, based on some uh, work that uh, Yuri and Dan and I have done recently, uh, that uh, the shape of fiscal policy uh, to deal with uh, uh, declines in economic activity as occurred during COVID-19 and might occur in other uh, similar situations might better be tailored to specific um, firms that are um, uh, uh, that are particularly in, uh, in, in distress uh, because of big shifts and uh, temporary shifts in economic activity, rather than uh, the more common prescription of re for recessions of just general government spending or general transfers to household. Thank you very much for listening.